how you were gonna meet Roz, imagining it's like at a coffee shop. Yeah. And you've been sitting outside of this coffee shop for a couple hours. With no sign of Roz. She hasn't responded to you in the past couple of days, which is weird. She basically lives online. Mm -hmm. You've gotten many late night messages from her with random crazy theories about aliens and so forth. So the fact that she's been quiet the past couple of days after inviting you to come help her investigate something is strange, to say the least. And now she's a few hours late. What is Angel doing? And also, what does Angel look like as she's waiting at this coffee shop? Oh yes, Angel is... Well, she would hate to be called it, but she is petite. She's rather short at like 5'2". She's got the typical Irish pale complexion freckles and bright red hair that refuses to stay in order. Very, very, very much curls. It's hilarious. Everyone in the party is short, and then there's Hess. <laughs> That's funny. She was 5'10", but everyone is just, like, short. <laughs> short with round glasses. Oh, yes, and let's not forget her piercings. She's got a number of them. Just enough that your typical wasp will clutch her pearls. But not like she's taken a shotgun shell to the face. <laughs> or bird shot. Yeah, so you haven't heard anything for us. I imagine she's told you where her apartment is because she's well aware of the fact that sometimes she will fall down rabbit holes just kind of fall off the radar for a bit so it's one of those yeah I should be there but if I get distracted here's where you can find me mm -hmm. okay so you do know where she lives and what are you gonna do yeah she's just gonna head straight over to Raza's place since she's so late pack up whatever you had take a drink with you and head over to her apartment it's locked but she also I'll do her to find the key, because sometimes when she's down the rabbit hole, she doesn't answer the door. Fair enough. And you're able to get in. And would you like to... I guess it would be a role to investigate a place of power. Alrighty, what is that? When you study a sanctuary, oh, blah blah blah, roll with the circle that controls it, she would be mortalis on a hit you see below the surface to the reality underneath. The MC will reveal area and PC or item located within this, not what it seems. Let's see, rolling with Mortalis. That's a six. Three and a four on the die, my Mortalis is a minus one. <laughs> and that's, well, mark experience. Yeah. Oh yeah, and that works differently in this one. You mark the circle, right? Yeah, you mark the failure in the circle. Yeah, I remember when I was skimming over the book to figure out how this one particular one is different. I was like, oh, they made advancement difficult. <laughs> or at least more complicated than most Powered by the Apocalypse systems. Yeah, this one's got more moving pieces. It's more like three-dimensional chess, but it's very entertaining. Oh, yeah. Well... <laughs> certain enough strong. It was close enough, so I'll say, you look around, and it looks pretty neatly organized. I mean, there are some places in her apartment that are just absolute chaos, but that's just Roz. You see, she's got, like, bookshelf. She has a whole full-on conspiracy board on one wall. It doesn't look like anything really happened here. It doesn't look like anything might have happened to her here, so that's comforting. It just kind of looks like maybe she left and hasn't come back. Not entirely sure if, like, maybe she just went out and forgot about something, or you don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. But it's been days since I've heard from her, right? Yeah. Actually, I think on the fridge I think she might have, like, a calendar on the fridge has notes in her little, in her shorthand on it that make some, some of them you recognize, others make no sense. It's Roz. And you notice 
she's Mark stays off like most people and hasn't had day marked off for about three or four days. Okay. And is there anything in particular you're going to look at or focus on as you're investigating? Her conspiracy board. Because that's probably the best bet as to whatever she brought me here to look into. Actually, would you like to roll to figure someone out? Yes, I would. When you try to figure someone out, roll with mind. I feel like that makes that makes sense. Is your oh, I like mind. <laughs> That's a good one for me. <laughs> Yay! Holy mother! Of... That's a thirteen. Alrighty, on a hit, ask two. What? No ten plus? That's bunk. If you're in their circle, ask an additional question. Or are you more talents or are you power? <laughs> I'm power. Yeah, I thought so. Well, I'll find another bonus thing to give you, but your questions are who's pulling your character's strings? What's your character's beef with blank? What's your character hoping to get from blank? Does your character worry is going to happen? How could I get your character to blank? Or how could I put your character in my debt? I will share that because she had reached out to you about a stranger and strange things happening around them. So you know this conspiracy board is centered around the stranger which you might have like a picture of someone from behind where you can't see their face all you can tell is it is a man and appears mostly human okay so for the two questions well what did Roz worry was going to happen as you're looking over the board you see notes and you see pictures of people Roz knows there is a picture of two 20 something year old males and another older male figure these are probably people she knows and are close to as well as notes about them going missing there's Perhaps, like, news articles or something. Just, like, pieces of information about people asking. Have you seen this person? We haven't heard from them in a while. The first disappearance was... I want to say it was the older man. He disappeared about a month or so ago. And one of the younger men disappeared soon after. And the other one disappeared soon after that. So, you see, there are notes on theories of... How or why they disappeared. The disappearances didn't start happening until after the stranger arrived. She thinks the older man, someone referred to as Hawk, might have been going out to go fishing or something at a cabin and he never came back. One of the younger men, the last one to disappear, Darren, was going to go check on him. Because he was one of the few people who knew about the cabin because it's kind of like a little secret hideaway place. And he never came back from that, and the other young man, a man named Bart, was known to occasionally go out into the woods to collect ingredients, and she believes that is when they he went missing as well. So she has a theory that the stranger is behind this and he's making them disappear, but she doesn't know why. But she's worried that he is up to something, and someone that just comes into a town immediately sucks up to the faction leaders and is immediately included in their circles to varying degrees and then people start disappearing this person's up to something and she wants to find out what she's afraid this is just the start of it okay and I guess the other question there's only really one I think that makes sense you can also adjust questions if needed yeah No, no, this one's kind of being tweaked a bit, but not really. What was she hoping to get from me? (laughs) She knows you've investigated a lot of paranormal things, a lot of things that went beyond what people know of. I think she also knows you have connections most paranormal investigators don't have. Mm. Trust you. I think she was hoping you would be able to help make sense of it, because... She's worried, and you could bring an outside perspective, because she thinks she might be missing something. I will say, additionally, you see a note that mentions 
her friend Cass having visions, which Cass is the only oracle left in Oak Ridge. Most have long since left because their visions go haywire. It is enough to drive a person mad. Because the things they see don't make sense in this world, but Cass stayed. And she said, Cass is seeing pieces of things in the future that she thinks might be caused by the stranger. She One of her theories includes that the people went missing because he needed people for a ritual to bring about the end of the world. Whether or not that's actually true is if he draws his theories can be a little out there, but the dots she's connecting are usually pretty spot on. But she's worried that Cass might be seeing the end of the world and that the stranger might be the one that causes it, but she doesn't know how to prove it. Which, knowing Roz, takes some of that with a grain of salt. She's good at finding the dots to connect, but what she the picture she draws from those dots is usually off. Okay. So what are you gonna do now? So there's no sign of any struggle or anything happening in her apartment. Is there any sign, perhaps, of where, if Roz did leave willingly and just didn't come back like these other three, she left to go somewhere and never returned, is there any sign, perhaps, of where anything marked on the calendar or, I don't know, what else? A journal, diary? There is something on the calendar, but it's in her shorthand and code you don't recognize. If you want to roll plus mind, just a straight plus mind roll to see if maybe you notice anything else. Uh, thank goodness my mind is a two, because that makes the roll a seven. Whew. <laughs> okay, so you do see there's a sticky note. Looks like it might have been left as just like a heads up to someone, maybe to you. And it says, out pursuing a lead. Be back soon. It doesn't really specify where she was going. Roz, if you're gonna leave a note, you gotta be more specific than that. <sighs> gotta be careful, aliens, man. They can read. You never know who's watching. You couldn't have just sent me a text. Maybe she was worried you would talk her out of it if she sent you a text. She could have at least waited for me. Alright. I guess my idea here would be to try to figure out what lead she was following up on to try and basically retrace her steps, figure out where she was going, who she was going to speak to, whatever. Would you like to roll to head the streets? Yeah, that sounds good. Maybe go out. Roz has probably mentioned the name of other people who are aware in this city. Mm Mm-hmm. So what circle would this be with? Is this Mortalis again? Probably, yeah. Of course it is. <laughs> and I'll do the mortal shit. Gotta be joking. <laughs> it's a six again. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I got a six and a one. Hey, that. That's another experience. One of these days you'll figure out worlds. Right? Goodness. You remember her mentioning somebody that goes by the nickname of Gidget? And you try and remember where you where Roz mentioned they worked or that she met this person and you think like the bowling alley and you go there you ask around and you you can't find them you get a lot of weird looks from people (laughs) might be other places you could go to perhaps gather more information you do know Roz has gone to the library a lot because there if you know who to ask there. There are arcane scholars who can help you find things. Hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, I'm gonna give up on this gidget, fecker. <laughs> Head to the library. So that you just happened to be walking by, I was like, okay, have fun? 
Because they're not sure if you're talking to yourself or not. <laughs> she'd wave them off as she's leaving. So, head to the library. Which is, it's a small building. It's part of the municipal building. You go up to the counter and you see a person working behind the counter has a name tag that says her name is Brooke. And what are you going to be researching? What are you going to be looking into or asking about? Well, she's going to be asking about Roz. Try to figure out somebody here who was familiar with her. Okay. So, you ask her about Roz and... Yeah, she is an interesting one. I haven't seen her in a couple of days. She usually talked to Bart, but now that you mentioned I haven't seen him in a while either. This kind of comes in off and on and usually goes immediately to whatever section she's interested in and hangs out there. And I can look to see what she was looking at last. That would be a big help. I just... Give me one moment, and she caps away at the computer for a second. Looks like she was looking into the history of oracles in Oak Ridge. She was specifically looking into a person considered the first one. Well, whether or not he actually is, is debatable, but John Hendricks and some of his prophecies. Some of them came true about the lab and so forth, but hang on. If you want, I can show you to the book she was looking at. That would be great. Hey, right this way. And she takes you over. So, I'm gonna say, like, the headings in this section, it looks like it's books on mathematics and so forth, but being aware and familiar with magic and the arcane, you can see past that to the glamour that shows what the actual section headings are. Mm-hmm. That's the best way to keep mortals from accidentally stumbling like, a part of a book of prophecies is make it look like it's a book about math. Nothing against math books, right. because some of those actually do look interesting, but... <laughs> <laughs> I worked in a bookstore for a while. Some of them did look rather entertaining. Like, there's one about do dice play God. And, like, that's... That's too interesting. funny. But she's like, okay, and I believe... This is the one she was looking to check out. I guess she decided not to, but there you go. And she hands you, it's a small book. Final Prophecies of John Hendricks. If you need anything else, I'll be right up at the counter. Thank you. Settle down and start flipping through it. You looking for anything in particular? Yep. Well, Roz was worried that Cass's vision meant the end of the world so anything mentioning any sort of apocalypse or apocalypse like situation a lone stranger that brings about the end of the world <laughs> anything that kind of twings that maybe this was something that Roz has been investigating or related to it all oh, plus mind Eight. You flip through and you read some of them. You pass by some that actually did pretty accurately foretell the building and creation of the lab. I just have missed the part where the wizards took over after the grimoire was discovered, because I guess you can't always see everything, or that was something that came kind of unexpected. After that, there were some that did come true as well as some that ended up not. It's almost like he was telling stories from a different book in a way. Mm. But one thing that catches your eye is one of the last things that he wrote. Shadow will come to the city in the valley. That shadow will bring with it dark portents. Three days after the fall of the last oracle, if that shadow is not stopped, all will be done. Alright. Nice and spooky. Yeah, that, that seems to fit. And what are you going to do with that information? Well, she would call up Cass. <laughs> I don't know if you have Cass. But... You don't have Cass's contact information. Does she not? Because they have... Oh uh... yeah, you would. 
Because she... The debt between them is that Angel helps decipher her visions. Yeah. Try and call up Cass and it goes straight to voicemail. It's like she's got her phone off. Of course it does. Usually the person you need to talk to most is the person you can't get a hold of. Naturally. Okay. I think since I can't get a hold of Cass, I'm going to change tracks a little bit. Okay. And I want to see what information I can get about this stranger. Those, I don't know, in the know, I'm not sure which circle she would poke. Maybe power, since that's probably the best bet. I mean, you do have people you can ask online, as well as people who seem to know more than they should. Hmm. Oh. Let's head back to Roz's apartment. Okay. This is gonna be the longest, farthest shot in the dark ever. And wrong with that? Those are the best when they actually pay off. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, she's going to go to Roz's PC and attempt to get into it. Okay. Uh... Yeah, like I said, very long shot when you're dealing with a paranoid uh, <laughs> conspiracy theorist computer. I don't know what you roll for. I guess roll plus mind and I'll give you a plus one because you know Roz pretty well. See if you can guess her password. Mind is my good one. <laughs> Eleven. Right, in that case, I'll say it takes you a couple of tries, but you are able to guess Roz's password, and it's something about Rosmo, New Mexico, at the moment. She changes it often, but... Of course it is. So what are you looking for? Who she was communicating with most recently? Her <laughs> forums that she's always on, or... Mostly just who she's been in contact with recently about this. In that case, I'm gonna say... Roll to figure someone out. Eleven again, wow. No, wait, ten. Sorry, that, that doesn't have a plus one. <laughs> Still? Very nice. Y'all, let me... I'm trying to find the... Yeah, who's pulling your strings? What's your character's beef? What's your character hoping to get? Are they worried it's gonna happen? How can I get your character to blank? And how can I put your character in my debt? What's your character hoping to get from blank could be a good option. Yeah, that's. I feel like that's the one closest to what I'm looking for. You poke around and you see some messages, a conversation she's been having with. I don't know if it specifically says who, because people like to use code names, but you definitely get the feeling this person's close to one of the faction leaders just by reading through the conversation. And they seem particularly weirded out by the stranger. Roz was asking this person for more information on the stranger, whatever this person happened to hear or pick up. As far as I can tell, it seems like the stranger knows this town really well for someone that no one recognizes as being from here. Feels like they're from here, but maybe not. Like there's some things they seem to be unaware of, and then when it's brought up, they play it off like, oh yeah, I knew that. But they seem to specifically know the people too well. And this person is weirded out by that, I think maybe... Maybe this stranger has the ability to know things that most people shouldn't. Not quite like an oracle, but it doesn't it doesn't make sense. But the stranger seems to know and be aware of things that they shouldn't be, and they think that might be how the strangers position themselves in the position of power they're in. But everything about them seems wrong. Feels wrong. Feels like it doesn't belong here. Okay. Which probably reads just a little definitely probably demonic. Or he's dimension hopping. I don't know about the dimensions yet. <laughs> Isn't that what Hess does? Are you aware that's what Hess does? Yes. 
been a while since we've gone through all of that. Yeah, or or it's a dimension hopper. Possibility. Yeah, so has those angels angel debts because she Angel is her go to for information or muscle when she's in trouble. And we actually talked about a little bit about how they met and whatnot earlier today, and yes, the, how they met was Angel was investigating some rumors of weird disturbances, aka the portals, and stumbled across Hess in some trouble. Ah. And helped her out of that. Gotcha. So, she's very familiar with, well, passingly familiar with dimension hopping, knows that it's a thing. <laughs> yeah, what that implies is probably a little bit above your pay grade slash things you want to think about. Yeah. Yeah, so could okay. be demon, could be dimension hopper. Now, what is going to be your second question? And you could perhaps rephrase that same question for what is your character hoping to get from the mysterious meeting? Yeah, that works. Leave that conversation and you poke around a bit more and you find where she's and taking some digital notes. You know she has some pretty dang impressive security on this camera, uh, camera computer. But she's taking some notes and even then she's using a bit of coded language, which most of it you're able to read through. You get the gist of it is that her hope from this meeting is that she would be able to get a better understanding of what the stranger is and what they're up to by obtaining proof of what the stranger is. Perhaps by following, staking out, and getting audio or visual recording of the stranger. Maybe even getting a chance to ask him some questions. And you look at that doc and looks like it was edited the day she disappeared that morning. Alright. So, I know this stranger has gotten in close with the factions. Oh, this is a bad idea. Roz has a lot more information, and she's got several library books, and there's more that you haven't been able to investigate yet. You've got a little bit of time before the stuff from your apartment arrives. But you do kind of need to be there to pick that up. Oh yeah, they've got my number. They'll call me when they get here. I want to try and find out how to get in touch with this stranger. How are you going to do that? Poke my friends in power? Well, I say friends. Ask your bosses, hey, how do I talk to this person? I don't like it when you put it like that, but yes. <laughs> Her main contact with them is... Oh shoot, I don't have that document open. I named him. Oh yeah, he has a name. And I put a description in there now, too. <laughs> Hooray! Ah, Xander. Xander White. That's her uh, main contact with them. Capital T. Gotta have the capital T. Yeah. So she'll give him a call. Call Xander and he's like, Hey Angel, what do you need? So, there's a new fella moved into Oak Ridge. A bit shady. And I was wondering if you have any knowledge of who or what he is, or can find it. I have seen some reports that there's been a new stranger in Oak Ridge and a couple of months ago, as well as some other odd individuals. I can look into it. I'll let you know as soon as I have anything. That'd be great. Because if I'm not mistaken, it is likely to interfere with everything out here. That would certainly be problematic, and I hope that you are incorrect on that, but we'll look into it and let you know soon. No, your instincts are good. Alright. Yeah, well, there's already four missing, so... Let's say I'm certain that it's related to him. It. I'm not sure. A little concerning that we're just now hearing about this, but 
I'll ask around, and if I need to, I'll run it up the train. You just be safe, and I'll get back to you in a couple hours. All right. So you hang up, and I imagine you stay in Raza's apartment for a little bit, gathering information, maybe packing up some of it to take with you? Yeah, definitely. So you gather up anything that could possibly be relevant, and then some, then you... But to move things into your apartment, and then it's pretty late at night. Sandra sends you a text saying it's taking a little bit longer than normal. I'll, pro- I'll try and get that information to you by tomorrow. And um, late at night, you get this weird sense that I don't know what, but you feel like something bad just happened. Shit. The next morning, you find out that. Sandra Pravda, lost Oracle Book Ridge, found murdered in the theater. Don't know who did it, but if that prophecy is right, you have three days before it, it's all over. Tempest Multi is a production of Pseudonym Social, changing reality one story at a time. It is an actual play podcast using Urban Shadows 2E Quick Start Guide, and it's set once again in the town of Oak Ridge, Tennessee. I am your keeper and producer. I am Ava Rogers. I will be playing Angel Day, the Sworn. To get more information on this or any of our other shows, check out our website at pseudonymsocial.com. Hey, everybody. You want a new D&D 5th edition podcast to listen to? (laughs) Well, I know I'm always looking for one. So guess what? I've got a recommendation for you. It's called Cheaper by the Dungeon. It's a Dungeons & Dragons campaign following the adventures of Zippy, Darian, and Norman D as they travel to become the greatest treasure hunters of all time. We've got some hardcore action. That's 18 damage! 18 damage! 18 damage! 3! You come through with an 18 damage, you're swinging a another swing. Sh- another swing, that's another seven, it's 17 damage. Two. 17 damage, 17 damage. 17 damage! Comedy? Right. So you wanna, you wanna bet on your friends? What do you wanna bet? Uh, they're very lives, I think. As high as it goes. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm ready to win. What? Okay. And even some dramatic moments. You have chosen the path you've sown. Now travel to the depths alone. And I, with Royce, I grab him and I throw him over the edge. But most of all, this show is filled to the brim with heart. And we hope that you come and join our adventure and become a cheapskate yourself. Catch Cheaper by the Dungeon anywhere you get your podcasts. Check us out. Love you. All right, yeah, yeah, we did it. Oh, I've got to find it. It's mine. Darian, I mean, that was that was so good. Wow, I'm, I'm amazed. Yeah.